Throughout history, art has gone through a gradual process of liberation. Early art was mostly constrained by the visions of the church or the agendas of the upper class, but slowly art became a force of its own, and the boundaries of what could be done in art continued to expand. Over the years, artists made brave choices, breaking the mold again and again. Romanticism gave light to works that were intensely personal, while movements like Impressionism opened up entire new perspectives on painting techniques. Another important yet little-known rung in this ladder is the emergence of something called process art. Simply stated, process art focuses intensely on the process of making art rather than just on the finished product. Instead of the perfected eternal composition, the process art movement showed interest in spontaneity, impermanence, and imperfection. Again, people looked at art in a new way, and again, the gates opened even wider both for artists and for what the world valued in art. The process art movement took shape in the late 1960s with artists such as Linda Bengalis coming out with very new approaches to creating and to the use of artistic materials. Process artists played with anti-form and embraced random occurrences. Actions like throwing, cutting, hanging, or dropping were often applied to non-traditional materials. Natural processes such as condensation, gravity, or decay were given importance in process art. Concern for artist creations to last beyond their original show went out the window, and the act of making art was for the first time being thought of as the art itself. This was the process art movement. To understand just how the movement came about, we need to take a step back and look at minimalism. The minimalist art movement preceded process art in the early 1960s as a form of abstract art, often centered around sculpture. The minimalists believed art should be entirely self-referential. That is to say that a work should contain no reference at all to the artist, or to anything for that matter, outside of the actual finished material shape. Minimalist work was often thought of as male-oriented, intended to be hard, polished, and impressively fabricated. Personal elements were intentionally stripped away and emotion all but rejected. With an intent towards some form of mental liberation, minimalism seemed to say, Forget all this business about historical context and the human drama. This is just this, and nothing more. Minimalism thrived in the United States throughout the 60s and 70s, and it's easy to imagine why many artists at that time rejected it. The process art movement is one of a few considered to have been anti-minimalist in nature. Although it shared a love of sculpture and of reductionism, process art seemed to reject everything else that minimalism stood for. Where minimalism was clean and quiet, process art was messy and abrasive, relaxing and at times rejecting form, giving every sign of the artist's hands. Where minimalism was more industrial, process art tended to be about nature or the body. One of the most well-known early process artists was a woman named Eva Hess. Since the end of the Second World War, women had been pushed to the periphery of the art world in the United States. Suddenly, women were not only becoming visible in this process art movement, but were oftentimes taking the lead. Eva Hess was a Jewish, German-born sculptor who left Nazi Germany at the age of two. She died in 1970 at only 34. Eva was known for her pioneering work with materials such as latex, fiberglass, and plastics. Hess was among the first artists of the 60s to experiment with the fluid contours of the organic world. Unlike the impersonal geometries of minimalism, her work reflected emotional struggles and related directly to the body and its quirks. Hess's untitled rope piece was made in the final months of her life, using knotted rope that was dipped in latex and left to shrink and tighten over time. Eva herself was quoted as saying, I think art is a total thing, a total person giving a contribution. It is an essence, a soul. In my inner soul, art and life are inseparable. The installation, Live in Your Head, When Attitudes Become Form, by Harold Seaman in 1969, was said to have finalized the process arts accreditation in the art world. Seaman was a Swiss curator and an art historian. And right in the middle of a time referred to as the death of the author, Seaman's installation was full of unfiltered personal context. In the following statement, Seaman gave his own summary of the show's content. Quote, the obvious opposition to form, 
the high degree of personal and emotional engagement. The pronouncement that certain objects are art, although they have not previously been defined as such. The shift of interest away from the result towards the artistic process. The installation was considered extremely groundbreaking in 1969 and is studied and admired by art historians to this day. Process art is often cross-referenced with other movements, including abstract expressionism. It is in the drip paintings of Jackson Pollock that the process art movement is said to have much of its roots. Done mostly in the early 1950s, Pollock's abstract works are some of the most highly valued paintings in the world today. I was amazed the first time I saw a video of Jackson Pollock. His flowing movements seem to explain the motion that I could suddenly see in his paintings. Watching him work, I felt I was witnessing the artistic process in some living way that I'd never seen before. About his work, Pollock stated, When I am in my painting, I am not aware of what I am doing. It is only after a sort of get acquainted period that I see what I have been about. I have no fear of making changes or destroying the image, because the painting has a life of its own. I try to let it come through. It is only when I lose contact with the painting that the result is a mess. Otherwise, there is pure harmony. Robert Morris wrote an influential article titled Anti-Form that appeared in a 1968 Art Forum magazine. Morris, a minimalist turned process artist himself, wrote, Of the abstract expressionists, only Pollock was able to recover process and hold on to it as part of the end form of the work. It is said that process art is more a term used to describe specific artistic approaches than it is an actual style of artwork. Another significant cross-reference with process art is something called environmental art. Environmental art involves working in and representing processes that take place in the natural world. One such artist, Chris Dury, was considered an environmental artist because he worked solely with items from nature. To quote Dury, my work makes connections between different phenomena in the world specifically between nature and culture, inner and outer, microcosm and macrocosm. Process art has always had a taste for the impermanent and for artwork that could really never be sold. Another modern environmental artist, Andy Goldsworthy, also creates out of the natural landscape. Speaking of his own artistic process, Goldsworthy writes, Movement, change, light, growth, and decay are the lifeblood of nature the energies that I try to tap through my work. These things are all part of the transient process that I cannot understand, unless my touch is also transient. Process art spans from performance art, to sculpture, to painting, and even music. What you've been hearing in the background is a track from The Disintegration Loops by William Basinski, released in 2002. While attempting to transfer and preserve old cassette recordings, Basinski noticed that his tapes were gradually crumbling as they played. The fine coating of magnetized metal was slivering off, and the music was decaying slightly with each pass through the spindle. Astonished, Basinski repeated this process with other tapes and created the disintegration loops, which today is considered a foremost example of process art and music. Process art continues to be a part of the modern artistic landscape. The Process Art House in Amarillo, Texas is host to regular shows involving process art. These images are from one of their recent shows titled Moving Targets. In another of their installations titled We Tape Things Together, the artist used nothing but black tape strung throughout the gallery. Process art is not something that is so easily defined or categorized. Rather than the perimeters of a particular style, process art tends to want none. It would prefer to challenge our concept of beauty and proportion, or to push aesthetics to their outer limits. But most importantly, it encourages us to focus on the concept of process in general when it comes to art. Process art certainly opened the doors for many new perspectives on art and it continues to this day to demonstrate that the act of making can be just as, if not more, important than the final product.